My name is Fred, and this is a minute for missions. You guys all know about the missions we receive and how it works. So the reason I'm standing up here in front of you today is to share with you how I prayed for someone on my first mission. And sharing that story will complete my second mission. So here it goes. In July, I was given my first mission. It was to pay, pray for a stranger. I thought that was pretty easy. I didn't really know that many people here, and I was on prayer shift. I'd answer the phone, I'd pray, fill out the envelope. I wasn't sure what all the fuss was about. This mission stuff was pretty easy. Then I read it closer, and it said, pray for a stranger. Got a little nervous, but I thought, okay, I'll pray on it, and it'll all be fine. So every morning I prayed, oh God, put a stranger in front of me so I can pray for him and I complete, complete my mission. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I'm walking to church, uh, as I'm walking to, to work, I'm looking for a stranger, crying in front of me. I'm sure I'm going to find them. As I get off the bus, I'm waiting for someone to fall off the bus so I can pick them up, and as I pick them up, I can pray for them, but nothing. Then I started really listening to the messages that were being spoken here, and I started praying differently. I began to pray that God would give me the strength and the courage and the words to speak when he wanted to use me so I could do his will and complete his mission. So on March 17th, Yep, eight months later. <laughs> I was in New York at an amazing business dinner. Um, I began to speak to someone that I didn't know who was sitting at my table. We started talking about our plans for the weekend. She started sharing how she was gonna sleep in on the weekend. And I said that I was getting up early on Saturday and Sunday morning for church. She looked at me and said, Saturday and Sunday? What religion is this? So I said I was born again Christian, pretty proud. Now normally at these business dinners I would say, I'm Christian, wouldn't throw in the born again, so I feel like I was making some real strides here. We started, we started talking and she told me about her mother who was very ill, who had recently had an operation and was in rehab. The doctors weren't sure if she'd walk again. I asked her if I could pray for her. Her face lit up and she said yes. So I prayed for her mother's health and healing. It was amazing how easy the words poured out of my heart and my mouth, like they weren't even mine. And then another amazing thing happened. I prayed for the strength of her family and that if it wasn't God's will for her mother to walk again, that the family would have strength and grace to find blessing in that. And she thanked me. We hugged, we cried. God gave me the biggest blessing and the, the greatest feeling in my heart. Now this I took out of the notes, but I'm actually gonna share this part off, off the cuff. So that night, so, the, so the, 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 biz, the dinner's amazing. They get me a limo ride home because I live so far from the city. I'm calling and texting Pastor Bob and, Pastor Bob and Val that night. Pastor Bob's asleep already. Val sees the 15 texts and the, and, and the messages, and she calls me and says, is everything okay? It's a little late and Pastor Bob's asleep. So I start sharing with her, and she was amazing, and, and it was just like a great night. So, so that's what I remember. I remember praying for, for this, this woman and, 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 and her family and, and sharing it with Val, and we do go to sleep kind of early. It wasn't really that. that. No, I really okay. don't. So it's just you have to catch me on one night, so. So I guess I'm done, right? That's it. Well, that, I shared my story. There's a little more. Okay, so three weeks ago, Pastor Bob did congratulate me on finishing my first mission, um, and, and he also commented on how it took eight months to finish it. So I decided to heckle him from the audience. Um, looking back on that probably wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done. And he said how I would have to get up in front here and tell everyone my story. I said, no way. I don't get up in front of a group of people. That's not my thing. Later that day, Kim Spicer texted me saying how excited she was that I would get up here and share my story. I text back, no way. She replies, but if God tells you, you can't say no, and I'm pretty sure we'll see you up there eventually. So in only the way I could do it, I text back, okay, if he tells me, I will, but he better be up here with me or he's in big trouble. Now to recap that day, I'm heckling the, 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 the head pastor and I'm threatening God that if he deserts me, he's in big trouble. I'm becoming one good Christian, huh? So, I come to church two weeks ago, and guess what my mission is? To get up here and share my first mission with you. See, I knew Pastor Bob was going to punish me for heckling him, and this was my punishment. And then it was like God smacked me upside the head, and boy, did I need it. These are not my missions. These aren't ways to get points on my Christian scorecard. They're not Bob, uh, Pastor Bob's missions used for torturing me. He has boot camp for that. And God's not going to leave me up here all alone or out there all alone, and definitely not because I threaten him. So my real mission, to know that he's with me always, to go out there and make him known however, wherever, and whenever I can, and that mission will never be completed. So my name is Fred, and this was God's Minute for Mission.